Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Earth Science screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Sano. And today we're going to go on to correlating rock layers. Now, remember from the last screencast, uh, pages 8 and 9, we were talking about how the Earth formed 4.6 billion years ago, and that at that point, it cooled and eventually formed rocks. And we can look at the Earth Science reference table to see where it says the earliest known rocks that um, basically we can date back. So we can look at rock layers forming from that period of time and moving forward to kind of figure out what exactly the sequence of events has been on Earth. So correlating rock layers is nothing more than matching up of rock layers in two separate areas. And remember, we kind of did something like this when we talked about South America um, being closely connected to Africa during the time of Pangaea. So we can actually look at rock layers in two completely different areas to see the dates at which or the relative dates at which things happened. So a couple of things we do when we're correlating rocks is we look for the color, texture, and composition of the rocks. And if we use that color if we know that the color is the same. The texture or the composition is the same. Most likely those rock layers may have formed at the same time. So we can use this stuff or use this information to help us sequence rock layers. Within correlating rock layers, some very helpful things for us are index fossils. Index fossils are used to find the age of the rock in which it's found. It does this a couple of ways. Uh, the best index fossils have existed or were from fossils or organisms that only existed for a very short period of time, but were found over a large geographic area. So if you remember back when we we're looking at South America being a part of Africa or Pangaea, how some fossils trace that path all the way through into Australia because they were all connected. Those fossils would be good index fossils because they existed over a wide range or a number of different continents. What would make them better is if that organism only existed for a very short period of time. We use index fossils like this. What we're able to do is we know from the index fossils how old the possible rock could be. Um, and then possibly date that fossil to a given a period of on Earth. So we can do something like this. We have a few different rock layers. We have two, so we could say this is in North America, and maybe this one is in uh, Europe. Just making this up. We can look at the fossils. These are index fossils right here going through so we can see one two three four layers on each side but there are some things that we do notice we notice that this rock layer right here and here contain the same index fossil so that's that's the same something's there we also notice that here where this dinosaur is it also matches up to that layer right there so looking at this we can sequence these rock layers we generally know that the old the oldest rock layer is going to be found on the bottom and if we look here we can compare the two and see well if this shell is on the bottom here but it's on top of there these must be older so this would be one being the oldest we're sequencing them all one being the oldest two three so we can see that this is rock layer three right here this event is going to be similar to that one Four, right? This one right here would be three also forming the same time. Four, five, and then six. The threes are matching up, forming at the same time. So you've just correlated your first rock layers right here. A couple other things that can act as index fossils are insects that are trapped in amber, or basically tree sap. And that's a little close up of it. You could also have or, uh, organisms that formed in tar pits. They've fallen in and they're kind of uh, fossilized pretty quickly. Volcanic ash also acts as another good index. When a volcano erupts abruptly, you have ash that's thrown up or ejected into the atmosphere. When it does that, you have these fine particles that are then carried by wind currents and then eventually settle down on the earth. Because the ash falls are extremely quick events and they can be spread over a large area, they can also make another time marker. So we can see here on this picture that this layer right here is actually a layer of ash. So if we see the same layer of ash somewhere else, we know that those layers or that ash was deposited at the same time and everything below it is going to be in a certain sequence and everything above it also the same thing, another sequence. And then that takes us to radioactive dating. Well, I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Take care.